record, recording, everything's recording. My audio will be slightly longer than my video. What will I do? Stay tuned to find out. I'm terrible at this. All right, so in this video, we're talking about the separation principle. And then we're going to use that to talk about combined control. So separation principle is the first topic here. So we're given a plant or a system, uh, given the system x dot of t equals a x of t plus b u of t. Uh, and the output y of t is equal to c x of t. What I want to do is also add in an observer based controller. So that's my system and I have an observer based controller. Which is x dot of k or x dot sub k of t is equal to a sub k x sub k of t plus b sub k y of t and then I've got r of t is equal to c sub k x sub k of t plus d sub k of y or multiplied by y t with an order in. All right, and then I'm going to also define a state which augments the original state x with the state xk. So uh, we'll call that x tilde of t. It's equal to x of t, xk of t. Then I can write the closed loop system The closed loop system is going to be written as x tilde dot of t, which is equal to a tilde plus b tilde times the matrix a sub k, b sub k, c sub k, d sub k. Uh, if you can't hear the bell in the background, which I can hear, uh, um, it's signifying that it is 1130 uh, in the morning at the university. Uh, where I work. Uh, just a, a side note while well, I'm saying a bunch of words that are mostly nonsense. All right, I'm going to take this matrix and multiply it by C tilde, and then I'm going to take the whole thing and multiply it by X tilde of T. So that's my closed loop system. So what's A tilde? A tilde is the A matrix, then a zero matrix, and a zero matrix, and a zero matrix, all to form this big giant matrix. Uh, B tilde is going to be zero b identity matrix zero and then c is going to be and that's c tilde is going to be zero i c zero now what i'm going to do is uh clarify what a sub k and b sub k are a sub k and uh you know as well as c sub k and uh d sub k If you, that's not clear uh, what I'm saying verbally, I'm saying D sub K, not D sub K, uh, although that will make an interesting video title. A minus L C minus B times K, not B sub K. That's A sub K or A sub K, depending on what you want to say. L is going to be B sub K. And then minus k is going to be c sub k, and d sub k is just going to be a zero uh, um, value there. Matrix, it, depending on the dimensions of k and l. Then uh, what I want to do is introduce a theorem, uh, and this is where uh, all my viewers will turn it off and be super bored, uh, because I'm going to give you a theorem uh, along with a proof, uh, but we're we need to do this so that way we can do combined control. So here's my theorem. Uh, the theorem is that uh, the closed loop system is stable if and only if the eigenvalues of A minus B 
BK and A minus LC are negative real parts. In other words, what I could say is that the roots of the determinant of SI minus A minus BK um, equals to zero and the roots of the determinant of SI minus A minus LC equal to zero are negative real parts if you don't remember what an eigenvalue is. Now I'm going to, uh, and by negative real parts I mean uh, in the left half complex plane. Now, I'm going to prove this, um, and I know uh, that uh, my uh, graduate school professors are going to uh, uh, tell me this is less rigorous than it would need to be. Uh, however, uh, I'm the doctor now, um, and uh, we're going to do this with as little rigor as possible to at least get you to a point where uh, you are more or less convinced. All right, so... Here's what we're going to do. Let's find the eigenvalues of the closed loop system. So find the eigenvalues of the closed loop system. All right, so the closed loop system uh, is looks like this. So I'm taking x tilde dot of t. It's equal to a zero 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 plus whatever b is uh, b i said is zero b i zero multiplied by uh, what i said that a sub k b sub k c sub k d sub k etc are um, we are uh, so that's a minus l c minus b k l minus k and zero and then multiplied by c I'm going to squeeze it in here it's zero i c zero boom all right so I would multiply all this out it turns out when I do so uh, I'm not going to do it all the way out here because of space constraints I'm going to get a plus b d sub k which I guess I could leave in uh, the original values there, but a b d sub k times c b c sub k b sub k c and then a sub k All right, so in real values here, that's a Because d sub k is zero minus b k LC and then A minus LC minus B times big K. All right, so that's my closed loop system, X tilde dot. All right, now what I want to do is a similarity transform. Um, uh, I don't have time in this video to explain how similarity transforms work, but what we're, we're going to do is this. We're going to say, let's let X hat be equal to i zero i minus i x tilde and then what i'll say is that x hat is equal to q inverse x tilde which uh, based on the definition of x tilde that's i zero i minus i multiplied by x of t x k of t which is equal to x of t, and then I've got x of t minus x k of t, boom. So then I can do the following. I can say, all right, q inverse x tilde of dot, or x tilde dot is equal to q inverse a q, q inverse x tilde. So uh, what I'm doing here is I'm pre-multiplying everything by q inverse and then I'm inserting in here an identity matrix. And this is what we call a similarity transform. And so the new closed loop system, 
The new closed loop system is I zero I minus I multiplied by A minus B K. That's a big K. Uh, LC A minus LC minus B big K times the inverse of, uh, or well, this is the inverse of Q. It turns out that Q equals to Q inverse, which is one of the nice features of this particular similarity transform. And so that's equal to A minus B K. I'm just doing the pre-multiplication step first. Uh, A minus L C. And then I've got L C plus B K minus A minus B K. These BKs here cancel each other out. And then I'm post multiplying by I zero I minus I. So this leaves me with A minus B K B K zero and A minus L C. That's what X tilde dot with the Q inverse in front of it is. So that's really, uh, and then I'd be Q inverse X tilde. So I know that Q inverse X tilde is just my X hat. So I've got X hat dot and X hat here. So let me write this out more clearly. I know X hat dot is equal to A minus B K B K zero A minus L C X hat. And I can call this matrix here a nice happy A hat. <laughs> Nothing like an A hat. All right. Now, Let's look at a hat. In general, um, if I'm doing eigenvalues, uh, this is kind of, um, I guess the appropriate word would be uh, a lemma here, but let's just say this is an aside. Um, in any diagonal matrix uh, in which I've got zeros um, in the lower part, so if in any, uh, if we were in a, a, a real, controls class here, uh, I would say, oh, we should probably prove this out. But in any uh, upper diagonal matrix, the eigenvalues are on the main diagonal. So for example, if I have one, one, zero, one, I can find the eigenvalues by looking at just that primary diagonal. All right, so let's look at a hat. A hat is, I think the correct term is upper uh, block diagonal. And if I'm saying something wrong, uh, I'm sure someone, uh, some uh, observer uh, will uh, comment in the comments below, but how many people on the internet, uh, on YouTube are in here seeking out modern control systems? Probably not that many, so I feel okay. All right, so uh, the eigenvalues of A hat are the eigenvalues of the block diagonal pieces on the main diagonal. Whoa, they're the eigenvalues of those diagonal pieces. Um, and so the eigenvalues of a hat are equal to the union of the eigenvalues of a minus b k with the eigenvalues of 
A minus L C, which is, is pretty wild. So uh, the matrix is in block diagonal form. Um, I also know uh, another aside here is that similarity transforms will preserve the system eigenvalues. All right, so as a result, all the eigenvalues uh, or poles are located where they're placed by the K and L designs. So the result is that the eigenvalues of A are placed by the K and L we choose. Now, of course, this makes the assumption that the system is observable and controllable, and we're going to say uh, that is uh, that happens to be uh, true if we're working through this. So, uh, what, what we would say is uh, if A, B, C, this tuple, not tuple, uh, triple, this triple um, is uh, observable and controllable. we can place the poles where we want them. And so if the system is stable here, um, so uh, going back to the original thing, I kind of jumped to the result, but um, so I'm just gonna put a little cloud here. This is kind of where we're going with this, but the eigenvalues of A are placed by K and L. And so if uh, if the closed loop system poles are in the left half plane, so closed loop system poles eigenvalues are in the left half plane, then the system is stable. All right, so what was the original statement that we made? The system stable if the eigenvalues of A minus BK and A minus LC are, have negative real parts or in the left half plane. So if I come back to here, I find that the eigenvalues of that closed loop system, the eigenvalues of the closed loop system are equal to the union of these two eigenvalues. So if this one's stable and this one's stable, then the overall system is stable. Uh, that is, uh, again, the very uh, unrigorous version of the proof for you. Uh, and so at that point, uh, what we can do is apply that. If the system is observable and controllable, we can actually do control design. And so we're going to do that with the rest of this video. Before I continue on with an example of that, uh, the big thing is that since those eigenvalues are separate, uh, the design of the observer and controller can be done separately. And typically, what we like to do is we like to set the observer dynamics to be much faster than the controller. So we can still stabilize the system as long as the system observ observation happens much quicker than the thing I'm trying to control. So typically uh, we uh, set the observer dynamics to be much faster. Uh, much is a relative term. Uh, often a factor of 10 is a good idea. All right, so let's do an example of combined control. So here's my example. I've got an inverted pendulum. Good uh, physical system application here. So, what I have is uh, an inverted pendulum. Let's say that 
uh, I've got a vertical axis here and then I've got a connection pin connection here and I've got this pendulum up, 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 uh, which has a mass at the end um, and uh, the I'll switch colors the force down here is uh, mass times gravity um, and then uh, this object has a length L um, and then an angle away from vertical theta um, and then uh, I have torque on this uh, system. So that's my inverted pendulum. Flip my physical page for my uh, electronic delivery of material here. Uh, so my equation here is that uh, the dynamics governing this is uh, ML squared, so the mass times the length squared, theta double dot, that's the second derivative of uh, the angle, um, is equal to MGL sine of theta plus the torque. All right, uh, so this is a nonlinear system, um, and in most of my classes, I try to stick with linear uh, time invariant uh, systems. So this looks a little different than something we expect, but uh, there is a handy dandy uh, nonlinear to linear approximation. So here's my approximation when theta is small, the sine of theta equals to theta. So if I can assume that the change in theta or the value of theta uh, in each discrete time step uh, here, or I guess continuous time step here, uh, is small, then uh, this is a good approximation. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I have ML squared, theta double dot, and then I'll move this MGL to the other side. MGL theta uh, is equal to the torque. And so theta double dot minus G over L theta is equal to one over ML squared times the torque. All right, and so I've now got a uh, interesting good equation here. So in fact, here's what I've got. I've got theta double dot uh, minus, so for this example, what I'm going to do is this. So th theta double dot, uh, and then I can have some constant times theta is equal to, you know, some constant input. Uh, in my example, this equation is theta double dot uh, minus 16 theta is equal to u, u being my input um, to the system. And so the output, y, is just theta. And so what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to let uh, x1 be theta. I'm going to let x2 be theta dot. And so my error, call it uh, E1 is equal to theta minus theta hat, and my error 2 is equal to theta dot minus theta hat dot. So the result of this, and I'll write it over on the right hand side here, is that if I have x dot equals ax plus bu and y is equal to cx, that a is 0, 1, 16, 0, b equals 0, 1, and c equals 1, 0. Um, and so uh, I'll be adding to this lecture um, some MATLAB stuff, but what I'm going to find is this. My closed loop system, my closed loop system is uh, represented from my previous examples, from uh, the examples in the last two lectures. I'm going to use the exact same control designs I had before. Um, I'm not giving you a control objective here because I've designed the controller and the 
uh, estimator or the observer separately. And that's equal to 0, 1, 0, 0, minus 5, minus 4, oops, minus 5, minus 4, 21, 4, 0, 0, 0, 0, uh, negative 3.21, goodness gracious me, get that cleaned up, uh, negative 3.21, and negative four zero um, and I am going to include uh, like I said uh, for the rest of this video once we get out of here I'm going to actually include MATLAB code which will help you arrive at this conclusion uh, but also uh, let you simulate the response uh, so all right that's all for this section we'll see you over in MATLAB in a minute All right, so this is the MATLAB portion of this lecture, and what I want to do is kind of talk through the code, and then what I'll do is I'll also put a link to this in the description of the video. So the first thing I do in this code is I close all of my windows, clear all of the variables, and I clear the command window, and then I also will define uh, the state space system A, B, C, and D. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is check the controllability matrix by uh, using the command CTRB of A comma B. Uh, and then uh, the next thing I'll do is I'll choose my desired poles. Uh, these are from the previous examples uh, from some previous uh, videos that or lectures that I've done. Uh, and then I'll use the command place to find the gain matrix K that places the poles of that closed loop control system, uh, which uh, the poles of SI minus A minus BK. Um, I wanna place those using K uh, at the locations P I just said. And then I'm going to create the uh, closed loop full state feedback system. Uh, and so I create that right here. I've got A minus B, K. Uh, that's my new A matrix. My new B, B matrix is just zero, zero. Um, my C matrix remains the same and D is zero. And then what I wanna do is I wanna plot the system response to an initial condition, uh, X of zero, if you will. I'm actually setting it to be negative 10, zero. Uh, so state one, the X state or X one state uh, is negative 10, the other one is zero. And I wanna see how it responds. And then I use the initial command to be able to actually see the response. Once I've done that, I design my observer. I check observability using OBSV. Uh, and then the next thing I do is I say, well, I know I want zeta to be 0 0.8 and omega n to be two. And so I find those roots and then I again use place uh, to place my um, to place my, to get my L matrix, but my L matrix is actually going to be in the wrong dimension using this place command. So what I'm doing is I'm taking A prime, C prime. These are the transposed versions of these matrices uh, to make the dimensions work out. And then L itself is actually just the transpose of that. And then I, using the same content that you just saw in the rest of this lecture, I construct my full system that has A minus BK, BK, a zero matrix, and then A minus LC. Um, and so this is what that combined system looks like. Uh, and then finally, I'm going to, again, uh, look at the system response to initial conditions. So let's take, let's go ahead and run that. Uh, I guess the last thing I'll do is I'll plot those responses, both the full state feedback and then the combined control where I have an observer. So let's do that. Uh, run, here we go. System is controllable, system is observable. Uh, these are things we'd already checked, but uh, this code returns that in the command window. Uh, so <clears throat> the blue response here um, is taking the system from negative 10 to zero at steady state, um, and it's doing so uh, in a fairly reasonable time frame. It looks like it's settling out around two seconds or less. Um, and then the combined control, I've got my observer, um, and at the same time, I'm trying to control based on what I've observed. So I've actually got a bit of a lag and an overshoot in that response. 
Uh, but uh, if my goal is to stabilize the system to a specific point, I've sure done that. Um, and so that's the uh, kind of goal of this example. Um, and like I said, I'll put the code for this in uh, a link in the comments. Um, and that's all I've got for right now. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you later. Um, awkward silence, awkward silence.